in this video, we're going to look at the best order for you to read through the books of the New Testament. Should you read canonically? Should you read in the order that they, the New Testament sets them out? Is there a better way to read through the New Testament in Greek? And if so, what are the benefits and where do I get that system from? Hi, I'm Daryl Burning from Master New Testament Greek, here to help you with the tools, habits and system to help you to master the Greek of the New Testament. If that sounds like you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then hit the notify bell to be notified when new videos are released. So here's the question, right? You've just finished beginning Greek and you want to start reading through the New Testament. Well, where do you start? Do you start in the in the book of Matthew? Do you start in the in First John? Do you start somewhere else? Well, and the, the answer to that question is really what we're focused on in this video. And we're going to look at five different approaches uh, to the question of what order should I read the books in? The first of those is the order in which the New Testament presents the books. Okay, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and so on. This is the canonical order. And we're going to look at the value of that. The second one is one that was prescribed by Daniel Wallace on his blog back in 2013. I'll leave a link to his blog post below so you can see what his ordering is. But you'll see it in this video as well. The third one comes from this book, which is a fantastic book, by the way, Greek for Life by Benjamin Merkel and Rob Plummer. This is a great book, and I recommend you get it. But on page... 67 of this book they give you an order by which you can go through the books of the new testament and they recommend a reading order the fourth order we're going to look at is a special delivery that i put together for a customer just recently using the master new testament greek system and the last one is master new testament greek itself and the order that the books are ordered in that. So we're going to compare these five approaches to figure out which one has the best approach to learning the vocabulary of the New Testament specifically, but just to help you to master the Greek of the New Testament. The first thing we need to do before we get into the numbers is just talk very briefly about these four different approaches. Now, it's really important to recognize that each of these four approaches has been crafted differently. They have very different goals. For instance, the order in which the books appear in the Greek New Testament is based on putting the life of Christ first, then the historical acts that take place through the apostles, followed by the writings of Paul and then the general epistles. So that's the order that the New Testament, it doesn't care about reading difficulty or anything like that. In fact, it's assuming that you're a native Koine Greek reader. So that doesn't matter. But for you and I, who are not native Koine Greek readers, we're looking at what is the impact of reading in that order and how is that going to make a difference to our motivation to actually keep reading the Greek of the New Testament. Now, when it comes to both Daniel Wallace and Greek for Life, both of these approaches are designed for people who have just finished beginning Greek and who are looking to learn to read the Greek New Testament. Greek for Life and uh, Wallace's approach, both of those approaches are assuming that you're reading the Greek in a reader's edition. Okay, so you're not actually learning the vocabulary, you're reading the text based on the, primarily on the syntactical difficulty and not on the lexical difficulty. Now, that doesn't mean to say they don't take lexical difficulty into account, they do. But they're assuming the words are going to be at the bottom of the page. With Master New Testament Greek, the approach is different. We look at the syntactical difficulty, but we also look at the number of words you're going to have to memorize to master that book. Now, if you're not going to master the New Testament, if you don't want to memorize all the words in the New Testament, well, you don't have to worry about the Master New Testament Greek approach. You can then look at the, the Wallace approach and Greek for life, and you can determine which of those is going to suit you best with your reader's edition. And that's fine. <clears throat> reader's editions are great, okay? They're a really good way to get, in, get into the Greek really quickly. The other approach is one that was a special delivery, and I'm not going to talk about this a whole lot, but this was for somebody who's really following the Greek for life approach, but they've already read the Joanian epistle so they wanted to put those last and so this person really prioritized the gospels themselves and put the books in the order by focusing on the gospels first then the greek for life order of books and then the joanine epistles at the very end and you'll see that that has a really big and important impact on the approach that they take and how long it's going to take them to do that work so let's talk through the numbers very briefly. First of all, here's the canonical order. You can see this on my screen and you can see this is just Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all the way through to Revelation. And you can see here the number of words to learn per book that you haven't already learned. So here's how this works. Each time you get to one of these books, you're seeing the number of words you've already learned in that book that you don't have to memorize again. 
right? That gives you then the number of words that you still have to learn to be able to read that book fluently. Now, these, in other words, these are words that occur in this book for the first time, but not necessarily the last time. Although here in this instance, you can see that even though we've got 305 words in Mark to learn after we master Matthew, 74 of those words are hapax legomena. Okay, so again, you may or may not want to memorize hapax legomena. I'm just putting all the information there. You can decide for yourself. That means that 24% of all of those new words are hapax legomena. And so you're going to spend, and ultimately on Matthew, you're going to spend 55 weeks going through and memorizing the, the words in the, the Gospel of Matthew. Now that's assuming 25 words a week. Okay, if you're going to memorize 25 new words per week, you're going to spend just over a year just learning the vocabulary for the book of Matthew. Now, the good news is that once you've done Matthew, it's getting it's going to it starts getting to be all downhill from there. Yeah, you've got some big ones around, you know, Mark is 12 weeks, Luke is 29 and Acts is 33. But once you get through Romans, really all of these are very short. So you don't have a lot of words to memorize at all and it's not going to take you long. The longest is 7 weeks memorizing the words of that uh, that text. Now, on average, it doesn't matter which of these you choose, it's going to take you on average two months to learn a book. Okay, so some books are obviously longer, like Matthew, some books are going to be shorter. One of the things to watch out for, particularly if you are looking at memorizing the vocabulary, is you want to keep your cadence up. Because one of the difficulties of memorizing words is that there are so many, and you want to get the most bang for your buck as you go. And this is one of the problems with the occurrence-based system. As you go through the words of the New Testament, you the number of words you have to learn, like from 20 occurrences down to 10 occurrences, is a lot more than from tw 20 occurrences to 50 occurrences. It's twice as many. And so you've got a lot more words to memorize, which means that you're doing more work and you're actually not getting as far through. It's just taking longer and longer for you to get through. And you can see here that if you were going to go through just learning the hapax legomena, it's going to take you a really long time. So if you're going to go through canonically, you're going to spend a lot of time. You're going to spend, you know, really more than two years just in the Gospels. And then from there, you're going to spend a third year in Acts and Romans. And then the fourth year, you're going to be whizzing through books pretty quickly. Let's compare that to Wallace's approach. Now Wallace puts the Jonian epistles first, as you can see, and then he gets into some of the, you know, one of the easier books of Paul, Philemon, followed by Revelation, and then you're going to focus on Paul, get into Mark a little bit, and so on and so forth. Now this again, like I mentioned, takes into account both the syntactical and the lexical difficulty, but primarily is focused on syntactical difficulty, assuming you're reading with a reader's edition. You're going to have all the words that you don't know that occur 50 times or less, or 30 times or less, depending on what reader's edition you have, at the bottom of the page. So this is primarily about syntactical difficulty. And so you can see here that if you're going to go through and do this, uh, you're going to spend 29 weeks learning the words in the Gospel of John, which is going to be standard. Um, Greek for life also starts with the Gospel of John. So you're going to see some similarities there as well. And then you're going to go into some of these other ones. And of course, it doesn't take you long to learn the words in Philemon. But you can see here how this is getting smoothed out. So in the first year of your study, you're going to learn, you know, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Philemon, and Revelation, as well as the Gospel of John. So you're making a lot more progress there in your first year. In your second year, you're going to get a chunk of the way through Romans, but you're also going to master Matthew and Mark as well. So again, in that two years, you're going to have made your way through 11 books of the Greek New Testament. And that's going to give you a great degree of confidence, and it's going to help you to want to keep going. Greek for life, uh, like I mentioned, starts with 1 John and the Gospel of John. So you've got a very similar starting point. Then you go into Revelation, Mark, Matthew, back to 2 John, Luke, and then back into some of Paul's writings. Now, you're going to see here your first year is going to be basically in John's writings, John, 1 John, and Revelation. Your second year, you're going to finish that off, really, by going through to second, uh, third, third John. And so in your first two years, you're going to spend time in seven books of the New Testament, and you're not really even touching any of 
Paul's work yet at all. Let me just show you the special order they did. So you can see this person has prioritized the Gospels. And the reason they did this is they've already read through the Johannine literature. So they've been through the Greek for life approach and a little bit of the Wallace approach. And they're really spending their time in the Gospels. So they wanted to have the, the vocabulary prioritized so that they could learn to read through the Gospels as quickly as possible. So Master New Testament Greek is designed to keep you motivated. And so here's the Master New Testament Greek approach. In your first year, you're going to learn 13 books of the Greek New Testament. And that includes some of the more difficult books as well. So you can see here we start with the Gospel of John, then we go into some of Paul's writings, and then toward the end of that we start to hit on Jude. Now Jude, you'll notice here looking at Wallace, is actually one of the more difficult books. Uh, and Greek for Life also puts Jude right at the bottom because Jude and Second Peter are two of the most difficult books in the Greek New Testament in terms of syntactical difficulty. However, I've put it earlier on to challenge you because it's only 20 four verses right so it's not that many verses and you can slow yourself down and work through it and this gives you new experience with a difficult text up front which is not going to bog you down okay and so you can see that over four weeks the first four weeks you're going to learn first john then it's second john third john and second thessalonians within the first couple of months three months really of getting into your learning so you're going to start, you're going to get challenged quickly. It's not overly difficult though, and these are short books, so you're getting to master those quickly. And the nice thing about this is that you're going to get to, uh, you're going to stay motivated because even if you're not enjoying Second Thessalonians, well, it's only a few weeks long, and then you're into Philemon. And, you know, by the time you're into Philemon and First Thessalonians, you're starting to get your head around the slightly more difficult Greek that Paul provides for us. And of course, you still get some of these more difficult books down the bottom here. But here's the value of putting them later on. As you've already learned, by the time you get to Romans, you've already learned uh, 604 words that are in that book, leaving you with only 199 words left to learn to master that whole book. Actually, this starts way back here in Ephesians, where you've already learned 187 words, and now you have only 170 left. So it gives you great rewards very quickly so that you can start to you know, master books and get through a lot of the vocabulary of the shorter books quickly, which then prepares you for those longer books as well. So let's see how these stack up. First of all, if you look at these from, and, and here I'm using uh, Microsoft Excel's wonderful uh, heat map Ch charting to show you where the the big numbers are and so you can see here with the canonical list you're really knocking off big books with lots of words up front the same goes for both wallace and greek for life in fact even more so with greek for life than with wallace and so the other special order of course you're focusing on the big books right up front with the gospels and so interestingly enough that leaves when you get to the gospel of john you've only got 114 words to learn uh, which is really not very many at all. So you can get through that last gospel really quickly. What I like about this is that you're able to really, you know, get over the big hump up front. But the problem is that the most challenging part from a mindset point of view is that upfront part. So this is something that is not for the faint hearted. This is where you get bogged down and you don't want to get bogged down in your vocabulary. If you want to be successful, you want to keep getting quick wins. And the way to do that is to go through Master New Testament Greek, where you've got these very short books and they're going to give you you know, they mount up so they end up giving you more and more capacity with the books you've still got left to go. And by the time you get to some of those larger books, you're actually speeding up your reading. So by the time you get to the Gospel of John, you're able to read a chapter a day in the Gospel of John. And you feel pretty cool when you can read a chapter a day in the Gospel of John. By comparison, when you're up here, there's no way if you're just finished beginning Greek, you're going to be able to read a chapter a day in the Gospel of John. It's going to take you too long. One last thing here, and let me just show you this. And this is uh, looking at the amount of time. And again, just again, seeing how many weeks it's going to take you up front for each of these. You can see here with, with Wallace, you've got a you know, you've got a you know, big chunk up front with both Wallace and Greek for Life, and then it evens out, except with Greek for Life, because you're tackling some of those other longer books up front, you're going to take more time learning the vocabulary for that. With Master New Testament Greek, you go through a lot of books very quickly, meaning that you're going to, you're not likely to get bogged down in. In fact, where you're going to get the biggest and most difficult challenges is going to be right down here in the book of Acts. And you can see that it doesn't matter where you put Acts, it's a monster right? 24 weeks, 26 weeks, 22. It doesn't matter how you do the book of Acts. It is a hard book to master the vocabulary for. And here's the thing. By the time you get to Luke and Acts, you're actually done with just about the whole New Testament. What does it mean to just spend a little bit more time just mastering the book of Acts? It's not that hard. You're almost there 
get over that last hump and get it done. But this is the order of Master New Testament Greek compared to Greek for Life, Wallace's approach, uh, the canonical order, and you know, just a random special one that I put in there as well. I'd love to know which one of these suits you and why. Leave a note in the comment section below and let us know which system do you think is the easiest, the best for you and for your purposes, and why? What are you trying to achieve that makes that the best approach? Now, if you want to download this spreadsheet, I'm going to make this available to you at mntg dot me slash compare okay or master greek.com slash compare and you can compare these on your own with the spreadsheet for yourself okay so i hope this video and this comparison has been helpful if it has go ahead hit the subscribe button and hit the notify bell to be notified when new videos are released and i look forward to seeing you in the next video until then keep taking small consistent steps toward mastery of the greek new testament and i'll see you in the next video see you soon